We're going to focus on IT trends specifically at small and medium business. So I really don't care how it's going to impact Apple. I really don't care how it's going to impact large companies, large organizations, international, whatever. Really what I'm focusing on is how it impacts small and medium businesses. Okay? And then the other two, these are my opinions. Okay? And those of you who have already been here to a luncheon are, I'm amazed you came back, but also you know that what my opinion's worth. So. And uh, again, one of the key things for the lunch hours, we don't make it fancy and purdy. So this is going to be kind of down and dirty. First of all, the cloud. I know this will come as a shock, but the cloud is going to be a big topic for 2011. I know, I know. Who'd have thought? And normally I don't do Dilbert cartoons, but this one hits right off. The whole concept of if you just say cloud, you're, you're leading edge, and wow, what a great solution it is. Well, here's the challenge on that. Anybody remember e-this, e-that, e-pets, e-dogs, e-books, e, you know, just a little over 10 years ago, the exact same thing happened. If you had a startup business, all you had to do was throw a lowercase e at the front, and you're a freaking genius. Okay? Now, whatever your proposal is, just throw the word cloud. Okay, now it's a five letter edition instead of a one letter, so if you're a Scrabble player, you're gonna get more points. But that's one of the main things that concerns me about this rush to the cloud. Now, that said, Cplex IT, we've done, a, we've done about 10 BPOS conversions and migrating, we've worked with some companies who are looking to migrate up to the cloud, so we're not shying away from it by any way, shape, or form. And there are, and we'll talk about some, there are some tremendous cloud services available, but there is also somewhat of a knee-jerk reaction to should we be going to the cloud. So the commodity services, and by commodity, it's one of those, yeah, it should work. And simplifying email is probably the banner case right now. So I'm talking Web 2.0, because we've all got websites, right? We've all got blogs. We've all got those things that we just go up, we grab that information. Now we're talking about a much more two-way conversation or a much more sophisticated service, the 2.0 type stuff. So right now, between Google and Microsoft, you have the Google Apps, Google Docs, all that kind of stuff, and then you've got Microsoft BPOS, soon to be Office 365, which are both letting companies essentially subscribe to those commodity services for a fixed fee per user, as opposed to having to invest in the infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. So on the one side of the fence, I think this is going to continue to be a winner. Since we started doing the BPOS, we haven't talked to anybody seriously about doing an exchange upgrade, except for companies who had already bought the hardware and the software. Even including small business server, which includes exchange, there was interest in going up to the cloud for various reasons. I think that's going to continue, if not accelerate. That's a biggie. Conferencing, we'll talk about that. Some of the additional stuff that allows people to to communicate over large distances. You're going to see companies who are, who are literally going to come out and say, we're moving to the cloud. That's terrific. What does that mean? Well, it means we're moving to the cloud. Didn't you hear me? You know, and, and there is a, a value there, especially for companies who are looking to upgrade, who have a current deficiency in their infrastructure, and who want to replace stuff or add new functionality. The challenge is going to be where a company has okay infrastructure and actually all they need to do is clean it up but instead they're going to migrate to the cloud which will be part of the cleanup process. And the cleanup process is going to be the thing that's going to bring value but they're going to say no the value came from the cloud migration. You know it's one of those things where and I have to be a little careful with my analogies because my wife's here today. so. Um, anyway, if I had my way, we would ne the house wouldn't be cleaned. We'd let it get 
And she's laughing back there. They can wonder why. So what would happen is we would have an infrastructure there, but it wouldn't be maintained. It would deteriorate over a period of time, especially if it was left to me. So at a certain point in time, the infrastructure would collapse or be on the verge of collapsing. So instead, we'd go to a new house. Well, why are things better? Well, things are better because we went to this new house. This new house is great. The old one sucked. No, the old one wasn't maintained properly. There were things that could have been done that would have made it just as good as, as the cloud solution. Now, I, I want to be real clear here because especially in the IT uh, uh, consulting community, there's a lot of people who are gung-ho cloud and there are a lot of people who are anti-cloud. We're neither. We're trying to be realistic about the whole bloody thing. But if anybody starts getting Pollyannish about the cloud, you have to make sure it's for the right reasons. Now that said, there are some great reasons to go cloud. But this is going to be a huge debate. And unfortunately, a lot of the strategies are going to be, ugh, we're going to go this way, we're going to go that way. Part of the reason is because a lot of the cloud services are new. And, in, and they don't necessarily mix well with traditional. Okay. So if, for example, you wanted to have an exchange server and cloud-based exchange, a BPOS, that's tough to do right now. Really tough to do with an exchange ser server locally and Google. The integration of the solutions, the integration of the strategies, really just aren't there yet from a maturity standpoint. Which means that there are companies, and this is for somewhat larger companies, but there are companies where a hybrid solution would be really cool, but they can't do it right now. Extend that to servers, extend that to applications, you have the same issue. So, like what would be an example of that? Well, an example of that would be what if you had a company that had very small offices all over the bloody place and one corporate headquarters. Okay, if you put all of the email at the corporate headquarters, then everybody has to connect to the corporate headquarters to get their email. So you're going to put a bit of a, a thing on, a bit of a, a stress on the pipe. Whereas if you had the corporate email was located in the corporate building, but everybody else was up in the cloud, that'd be a nice mixture. The same thing is true when you start looking at applications. And how many of you are with companies that have uh, some kind of web-based presence? You have a website. Okay, cool. Most of you. How many of you have your website at your location? Nobody. Everybody else has your website hosted in the cloud. Okay. Well, that's all right because I really don't need to access our website. Our customers do. Okay. But when we start looking at integration, where yes, I'm going after my website because I'm going to pull data and I'm going to push data and all that. Now we start looking at those hybrid solutions. The same thing's going to be true for email and all that fun stuff. So I think one of the things that's going to happen is you're going to start seeing a little bit of this in, in uh, 2011, but really not until 2012 is where we start talking about hybrid solutions seriously. Right now, people will talk about it and the good consultants and the good people will We'll discuss that as that's the appropriate task, if you will. But it isn't, it's not sexy. Okay? That said, how many of you guys are uh, with smaller businesses, smaller companies? Okay, cool. The smaller companies, it's going to be uh, really nice in terms of how to standardize some of your applications and all that good fun stuff. Uh, Microsoft, for example, with Office 365 is essentially introducing a subscriber method for your office, meaning the office software itself. So you can actually take your BPOS and add office to it, so you pay monthly, and for that month you get the Exchange, SharePoint, Links, which is Live Meeting and Office Communicator, and Office Professional. And you're paying a monthly fee. And whenever you're done using the software, you know, you don't renew it. Google, of course, with Google Apps, Google Docs, all that kind of thing has the same thing. And I've, there's been some discussions online recently from some of the IT consulting groups that, that uh, uh, we do some email traffic back and forth. 
BPOS and Google Docs are commodities. So they are not necessarily, they will never fail, they will never have a problem, they will never whatever. There are other solutions hosted that are going to give you higher availability, higher reliability, so on and so forth. They cost a little bit more. So you've got a lot of choices, and the choices are all over the bloody place. Any questions on this? This is probably, from a media standpoint, one of the two biggest topics and trends and all that fun stuff. The most important thing I say, and again, it's what it's worth, all right? This and lunch. In my opinion, it is real easy to bamboozle business people into thinking the cloud is their savior, okay? It's tougher, but more appropriate to talk about a strategy of using the strengths of the cloud. So. Consumer and business blur. About three or four years ago, IT was able to say, don't bring, pardon my French, don't bring, bring that crap in here. Don't bring those devices in here. We're not gonna add that. We're not gonna let you install uh, XP Home on our network. We're not going to let you bring in, you know, all of your devices that are consumer related devices. Well, the problem is is that the consumer related devices are getting really really good. And we don't have good business alternatives for the same price range. So if you talk to people about the security of an iPhone, IT people are going to basically go <laughs> they're not and even the, the droids, not the most secure objects in the world. And you're going to attach them to our network? Pfft. Well, the answer now is yes, we are. Companies are now accepting those objects, whether it be strategic or they're trickling in. We're now accepting the fact that we've got to have these things. You know, the iPad. Even Apple, when they introduced the bloody thing, said, well, that's not really a business product. It's really for consumers, you know. And yet, there's a lot of applications using the iPad that businesses are using because there really isn't a good, similarly priced, competitively priced Windows version. I think that'll change in the next year or two, but it hasn't yet. So, like I say, Android, iPhone, iPad, all of these devices, people are going to be doing more and more work from home, which means their home network and the business network are going to start touching. Okay? The losers, Blackberries. Used to be that was what we wanted running on a Bez server and all that fun stuff. Now, more and more, it's like anything but a Blackberry. <coughs> IT support people. We used to have stronger keys to the kingdom because we had somebody who wanted to use something because they liked how it worked. Now we have people who want to use something because they like what it does. It actually accomplishes business stuff. 